Good morning to you, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us through our online service. Um, just a kind reminder that we are also open on site. If you are able to come through to church, please do come through to the main church, or you can also come through to the youth if you want to connect with us. My name is Tabang, and as I always say, it is a pleasure for me to be leading you in a space and time of worship. And so let us worship God together. Let us begin this service by lighting the candle together. And so we light this candle, friends, as a constant reminder to ourselves that regardless of what happens in our lives, God is the light of the world. And so the Bible says, because Jesus is also the light of the world, whoever follows him shall not walk in darkness. And so we light this candle to proclaim that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us worship God in song. Beautiful God, laying your majesty aside, you reached out in love to show me darkness into light
And we now find a scripture reading from the New Testament, the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 6. We read from verse 37 to verse 36. The heading of the passage is titled, Love for Enemies. And we read from the NIV. But to you who are listening, I say, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who ill-treat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. But if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend, from, if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be the children of the Most High. Because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. This is the word of God and thanks be to God. And so friends, last week we spoke about discipleship. The process of being disciples, but most importantly, the process of being Christ-like. And being Christ-like means having a character like Jesus Christ, who is our master. And today we continue from the gospel according to St. Luke, and we read from chapter 6, and we find Jesus here teaching the crowds that have been following him. And so Luke is the author of this gospel, and we believe that Luke is a doctor. So Luke carefully examined everything that Jesus did and then selected the content that's going to help us realize that Jesus Christ is the promised Savior of the Israelites or the Jews. But most importantly, Jesus Christ is also a Savior of all mankind. And so when we read scripture, one of the most central themes of the Bible is love. You hear that God is love. You hear that for God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. You hear that Jesus saying to the disciples, love one another as I have loved you. You read in the book of Jeremiah when God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. You read from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the entire chapter is dedicated on the concept of love. So God is love and everything about him is love. And so we know that it's easy to love the people that we want to love. We know that it's always easy to love people who do good to us. But then today, this morning, we find ourselves reading one of the most interesting commandments. Because as we read, we have always heard Jesus say to the disciples, Love one another as I have loved you. So because the disciples have been with Christ, because the disciples have some sort of a relationship, we then realize that it could be easy for them to love one another. But again, today, we realize Jesus, we hear Jesus saying to us, love your enemies. Love those who do not do good to you. Love those who ill-treat you. If they slap you on this cheek, turn on the side and give them that other, the other cheek. And so I believe that there is no commandment of Jesus which has caused so much discussion and debate as the commandment to love our enemies. Because these are people who have hurt us. These are people who have inflicted some form of a pain in our lives. These are people who have done something to us. But Jesus says to us, love them. 
And because of what they have done to us, we are justified not to like them. We are justified not to love them. We are justified even to revenge on them. But Jesus says to us, instead of revenging, love them. And so I remember Martin Luther King Jr. saying, darkness cannot drive darkness away. Hatred cannot drive darkness. Hatred away, hatred away, but it's only love that can drive hatred away the same way that it can only be light that drives darkness away. So Jesus now gives us a new commandment to say, love your enemies. Do good even to them. Even if they have done something bad, do good. You see, so Jesus is saying your responsibility is not to question why they've done whatever they've done to you. But your responsibility is to love them regardless of what they've done to you. And so Jesus knows that it's not going to be easy. And there's no way in scripture where Jesus says, love them, they're going to change or love them, it's going to be easy. But Jesus says, love them because you understand who you are. And who you are is you are a daughter of and son of Jesus Christ. You are a believer. You are a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ. You are the son and a daughter of light. You are the son and daughter of Jesus Christ. And so we live in this world to show the character of Jesus to the world. And so because Jesus is love, regardless of whatever circumstance that we are in, we need to love. And so it's easy for us to love the nearest and the dearest, those that we consider friends. But Jesus says, if you do that because it's automatic that it's possible, what good does it do? So the world that we live in is full of people who are treating us bad, is full of people who are treating us bad. But Jesus says, for this world to be a better place, you who are my followers need to show love. And so Jesus says, Even sinners love those who love them. So Jesus says, I want you to be different because sinners love those who love them and all I want you to do is you need to be different. And how best can it be outside of you loving even those that do not deserve your love? And so Jesus has shown us that it's possible. He went to the cross to die for saints and sinners. He went to the cross and showed love, not only to those who followed him, but showed love for the rest of humanity. And so this is why he's saying, love those who treat you bad. And then do unto others what you want them to do to you. Not, don't do unto others what they're doing to you, but do unto others what you want them to do to you. If you want people to be kind to you, be kind to them, regardless of what they've done to you. If you want people to show you love, show them love regardless of whatever that they have done to you. And so Jesus is giving us a new way of living. You see, fellow brothers and sisters, Christianity and following Jesus Christ is not just about memorizing scriptures, but it is also a way to live. So people need to look at our lives and realize that there is something different about us because our lives are not mandated by how people live. Our lives are not based on what people say we are, but our lives are lives of people who follow Jesus Christ. So our lives are people who need to be Christ-like. So love those who love you. Love those who hate you. And so... Then lastly, Jesus says, your reward will be great. You will be children of the Most High. So we don't get to be children of the Most High by simply coming to church, to youth on a Friday, to church on Sunday. But we also become children of the Most High God when we do what Jesus wants us to do. Last week I said, one of the characteristics of being a disciple is to following the commandments of Jesus. And so Jesus today says to us that we need to love our enemies. And so we will be children of the Most High because He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. And so lastly, Jesus says, 
Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Show kindness. Do those random acts of kindness even to those that do not deserve this love. And so you and I, my dear brother and my dear sister, we are called to show love. We are actually called to be bigger people. That's, that's just how it is. God calls us to be bigger and better people. And sometimes it feels unfair because people treat us bad, because people do things to us. And we feel like, why should we show them love and kindness when they deserve punishment and revenge? But God is saying, for those that were wicked and ungrateful, I did not show punishment, but I showed love. And so because you are people who are desiring to be Christ-like, show them love. Be a bigger and better person. Because Jesus chose to be a bigger and a better person. So here's my challenge for you this week. That person that you are justified to show revenge to, go and show them love and kindness. Because Jesus says that's what we need to do. And so according to the Greek people, there are three kinds of love. There's eros, there's philos, and there's agape. Now, eros is a love for, like a, an intimate love, the relationship kind of love. And then there's philos, the, the brotherly love. And there's agape the, the agape, the love of God. Now, Jesus says, because philos, you can choose to love your brother or not. Eros, you can choose to be in a relationship with someone. With agape, you love God. And so move beyond the love of choosing who to love and not to love. Move to a time or to a kind of love which is Christ-like. And so we love because God loved first. We love because God loves us. And because we understand that God love, uh, loves us. And then we move to extend that love. Not only to those who deserve it, but even to those who do not deserve it. God loved us when we did not deserve to be loved. And so let us go to love others when they do not deserve to be loved. And so this love is something that God compels us to do. It's a commandment. So let us go and love and show kindness to those that we do not love. And let us pray. And so Father, we thank you for your word. Your word, Lord God, that gives us a new command this morning. A command to love and show kindness and be, and, and, and be merciful to people, Lord God. Particularly those that do not deserve it, according to our standards. Those who have heard us, those who have spoken about us, and those who have done things to us, Lord. This is a heavy commandment, Lord, because the people that we hate, the people that we don't love, the people that we consider enemies, there is a reason why we've classified them as enemies. But you say to us that we should love them. You don't even ask us why we consider them enemies, but you give us a new command and a new command to love them. And so, Holy Spirit, as we seek to love these people, as we seek to show them kindness, we know that it's going to be difficult, but it's possible, Lord. And so help us to love these people. Also help us, Lord God, to spread love in this world so that this world may come to know you as the God of love through us, your disciples. And Lord God, help us to be Christ-like every day in our speeches, in our actions, in our private spaces, in our public spaces, so that this world can know, Lord God, that there is no one who can make it without love. And so I pray, Lord God, that as we get into the new week, may we be people of love, filled with love, who are reminded that you loved us when we did not deserve it. And so we need to love others as they do not deserve it. And I pray, Lord God, for people who are praying for their loved ones, Lord God, people who have lost their loved ones, people who have lost jobs, Lord God, people who are staying under bridges, Lord, may you go and, and, and Lord, Remind them of your love. May you assure them of your presence. And may you send us to them, Lord God. May you make us uncomfortable to go where Jesus wants us to go. To go where Jesus would have went if he was still around. And so, Lord God, I pray all of this 
In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so friends, thank you so much for joining us. A quick reminder once more, we are back on campus. Please do come through and worship with us. And let us close the service with the words of the benediction together. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen.